We talk about a lot of games here at Game Ranks, but with so much good stuff releasing every month, some stuff flies under the radar. I'm Manager the New Guy, and today in Game Ranks, I'm bringing you five smaller yet awesome games of September 2017. Starting off at number 5, we have Songbringer, which is a sci-fi action RPG that is essentially a Legend of Zelda top-down game with procedurally generated worlds. And those procedurally generated worlds is a big focus here. The developers want you to replay this game over and over again. At the beginning of your playthrough, you'll enter a six-letter word seed, and this will generate the entire planet, along with all of its secrets and its dungeons. You play as Rock, who is a crew member on the spaceship called the Songbringer. And after crash landing on the planet Ezkara, you find a sword in a cave, and after picking it up, you awaken an ancient evil, and it's your responsibility to take care of it. Story-wise, Songbringer doesn't knock it out of the park, but the writing is very entertaining, and the game totally doesn't take itself seriously at all, and Rock is actually pretty funny and throws out a ton of little jokes and funny quips. Gameplay-wise, Songbringer is definitely fun. The combat is actually pretty challenging, and is always fun to take part in. The puzzles, while being pretty basic and simple, are also always a good time. And the world world has a ton of secrets to discover, and if you want to make the game even harder, there is a permadeath mode that can be turned on. The point of Songbringer is definitely to play it over and over again, each time using a new world seed, giving you a different environment to explore with new secrets to find. And while there are players that will spend hours playing and replaying this game, mechanically, I just don't think this is something that's going to get that many playthroughs from me. I'll definitely run through it maybe three or four times, but not enough to see every single environment that this game has to offer. And moving on to number four, we have Tooth and Tail, which is a new RTS that's geared less towards hardcore fans of the genre and is meant more for general players, but it doesn't mean that hardcore players aren't welcome. While it may be a more streamlined RTS game, it's still a really fun game and it's pretty challenging. Let me just get this out of the way though, I don't really play RTSs like at all, and not only do I not play them, but I'm really bad at them, which is part of the reason why I don't play them. So for an RTS game to actually make me want to play it, it has to be doing something right, and this game does a lot right. The world and story here is great. The single player isn't something that was just thrown in. You could pick up this game just for the single player story alone and you've got your money's worth. And that's without even touching the multiplayer. The story is actually kind of fucked up. It takes place in like an Eastern Europe during the 1910s, which is a setting that I think they nail by the way. And there's a civil war being fought to determine who will eat and who will get eaten. Yeah, it's really dark, which is funny because you're playing as all these really cute animals, but they're just fighting over who's going to eat who. Like I mentioned earlier, the gameplay is pretty streamlined. Instead of clicking on different units, you actually control someone on the battlefield who kind of acts as your cursor. It's through them that you'll control troops, build turrets, recruit soldiers, and scout ahead. But this character that you control can die and they don't have an attack, so you have to be careful of scouting too far ahead without any soldiers with you. While it's a more basic streamlined RTS, it really plays is exactly the same as any other RTS would. You want to gain a good amount of currency, then use that currency to build structures and recruit units, and then you want to kill the bad guys. That's that's really it. Don't let it being streamlined scare you away from playing it though if you're a hardcore player. The art style, the story, the setting, the overall tone of this game is great and it's a surprisingly good time. Coming in number three, we have Hob. Let me just start off by saying that I went into Hob totally blind. I knew nothing about this game besides what the playable character actually looked like. And within minutes, I fell in love with this game. In Hob, you play as a nameless hero who's tasked with putting the world back together after some evil purple goo ruined it somehow. Uh, narratively, the game is very, very, very vague, and you're kind of left to just figure it out on your own. And when I say put the world back together, I mean that literally the world is in actual pieces, and every time you solve a puzzle, the environment shifts and changes a little bit to kind of make it something different. And while we're on the topic of puzzles, I must say that the puzzles here are great. They never get frustratingly hard. They're all pretty satisfying, and the way the environment transforms and changes right in front of you is really cool. Like I said before, for the narrative here is super ambiguous and you don't really understand what you're doing or why you're exactly doing it. The point of the game isn't the reason you're on this journey, but it's more about the actual journey itself and enjoying that journey. The game controls great, I never once got angry at the platforming, the controls work really well for it, although sometimes the camera angle can screw you a little bit, whether it's, you know, you're in combat and you get stuck against a wall, or sometimes you don't actually know where you're supposed to jump. Just because of how the camera is positioned, you don't know what jumps you can and cannot land. But I didn't see that happening too much. 
And Hob doesn't hold your hand. Once the adventure starts, it's up to you to figure out where to go and how to get there. You have a robot arm that you can use to knock down walls to make it through the environment, move around crates, and activate switches for puzzles. Your arm is also used for combat, along with a sword and other moves that can be purchased via an upgrade tree. Hob's simple dodge roll combat is actually a lot of fun, but I do wish there was a little bit more combat scenarios so I could enjoy it a little bit more. But besides that, this game is great. It's very Zelda-esque, and I haven't felt this feeling of awe from a game since Breath of the Wild. So if you're looking to get close to that feeling again, then Hob is a perfect game to help you with that. Next up at number two, we have Golf Story. This is a 16-bit RPG that's exclusive to the Nintendo Switch, and it surprised the shit out of me and pretty much everyone else that's played it. It really isn't a golf game. Yeah, the game revolves around you trying to be a golf pro, and yes, you do play golf, and the game also takes place pretty much exclusively on golf courses, but yeah, this isn't necessarily a golf game. Don't get me wrong, there is a lot of golf. You are going to play a lot of golf, but it's it's not something just for golf fans. The game is broken down into story missions, ranging from fighting off skeletons to saving turtles. The game is very wacky, and it's very aware of it. So even if you aren't a fan of golf, the actual golfing stuff here is a blast. It isn't hard to figure out. The controls are super easy. And so far, I haven't come across a course that's totally stumped me that I couldn't finish. The game as a whole actually really reminds me of Mario Golf on Game Boy Color. If you have a Nintendo Switch, this is definitely a game that I think every single Switch owner should play. It's a ton of fun. It's super charming. And I think that most people will really enjoy playing it. And coming into number one, we have SteamWorld Dig 2, which is obviously the sequel to SteamWorld Dig. If you've played the first game, you know exactly what you're getting into with this one because it's very similar to that, with some changes made here and there. So if you enjoyed the Metroidvania style gameplay from the first game, you're gonna love this. SteamWorld Dig 2 takes place in a steampunk styled world where Earth is now a desert wasteland with steam bots making up most of the world's population. You play as one of those steam bots, your name is Dorothy, and you're searching for your missing friend Rusty, who you actually play as in the first game. It has a pretty fun story with some pretty wacky characters that you're going to meet along the way. And gameplay wise, this game is so addicting. And not only is it addicting, but it's also a blast. You spend your time mining underground, searching for gems, and looking for hidden areas. Then you go back to town, sell whatever you found using your earnings to upgrade your tools. Then you head back down and you just do it all over again, progressing further and further trying to reach the next area. One really cool thing about SteamWorld Dig is how everyone's play area is kind of going to be different. Not that it's procedurally generated, but you actually kind of craft your play area, like depending on how you mine and where you mine. My personal favorite part of exploring is finding the puzzle rooms. They aren't hard to find, and they're scattered all across the map. But inside these rooms, you'll have to make it to the end by using all your available tools and all the gameplay mechanics. And while they aren't super hard, they're pretty challenging and will definitely take a few times to get through. And they're also just a blast. SteamWorld Dig 2 is really really addicting and it's a game that you can get lost in and lose track of time. Also, if you have a Nintendo Switch, this is a great game for that console. And this is shaping up to be one of my favorite non-AAA game releases of the year. And those are five smaller yet awesome games from September 2017, but we want to hear from you. Have any of you checked out any of these games yet? And what are some that maybe we missed? As I'm sure you already know, hitting that like button really helps us out. And if you're new here, subscribing is a good idea because we put up videos like this every single day. And the best way to get them is with a subscription to the channel. As always, thank you for watching and we'll see you next time right here on Game Ranks.